Hey kids, Flexing Teacher Weber here. I hope you're having a good day. Um, in class, we've been studying equivalent fractions. Now we had been actually using manipulatives to create equivalent fractions, and we've gradually moved from manipulatives to pictures to moving to no pictures. So what we had done yesterday is we had um, used some number lines to identify equivalent fractions. So for example, we have uh, the equivalent fraction one half equals some number over six. And if you want to identify what that number is, well, you can look at these number lines that have that are divided into fractions, and you can see if you look at the fraction one half, well, that's the exact same size as the fraction three over six. So the missing number there is three over six. And um, if you look at another example, like one over four is equal to some number out of eight. Well, if you look at the fraction 1 over 4. And how does that compare in eighths? Well, it's the exact same size as 2 over 8. So the missing number there is 2 over 8. Now what we've um, moved on to today is no picture. So how do you do this with no picture? Well, you look at the numbers that you know. So in this one, number 1, what do you do or what do you do to 2 to get 6. I should say, what do you multiply by 2 to get 6? Well, you do 2 times 3. And since they're equivalent fractions, if you multiply the denominator by 3, you can multiply the top by 3, and that's how you would get the answer of 3 over 6. And the same thing here. What do I multiply by 4 to get 8? I times 4. I don't times 4. I times 2. And then since they're equivalent, I would do the same thing to the top, and 1 times 2 is 2. So that's what we were working on yesterday. We were working on with the pictures. Today, we've transitioned to no pictures, just using multiplication. So here's what we did today. So I gave the kids some um, equivalent fractions, and for the missing number... We talked about how you can often use a, a letter called a variable to identify a missing number. So on this one, number one, I know the denominator of each fraction. So I ask myself, what do I multiply by four to get 12? Well, I do four times three. And since they're equivalent, I would do the same thing to the top, which means the value of X in this case is equal to one times three, which is three. And we did another one here where we don't know the numerator on the second fraction. So on this one, or pardon me, we don't know the denominator on the second fraction. What do I multiply by 2 to get 4? Well, I multiply 2. And then I do the same thing to the bottom, and 7 times 2 means that x is equal to 14. And we'll just look at a couple more there. So number 3. What do I multiply by 5 that will get me 25? Well, 5 times 5. And to figure out the value of the unknown number x, I do the same thing to 1, 1 times 5, and I get that the value of x is 1 times 5, which is 5. And then the last question we did together today, um, what do I multiply by 3 to get 15? I multiply by 5. I would do the same thing to the bottom. I'll do 4 times 5. And that means that the value of x is 4 times 5, which is 20. So that's um, using equivalent fractions to find the missing numbers. Um, and all the ones we did today were multiplication. So what the kids did for an assignment, they did this paper for an assignment. Uh, this is the paper that's due tomorrow, and that's what they have to do there. They have to identify the missing number. So in number one, I know the three and the six. I know that I can do three times two is six. So how do I get that unknown number? Well, I do the same thing to the top, one times two, which means the equivalent fractions there are one over three equals two over six. Um, I hope that helps. Um, that's all for now. Flexing Teacher Weber, out.